Well, hello everybody and welcome to the Live Wire here on Inside UNC Charlotte. Uh, we're uh, experimenting once again with a different time and uh, hope that you're uh, finding us and uh, putting us on your screen and we thank you for doing that. Over the last year of uh, launching um, our webcast called the Live Wire, we've made a point of focusing on um, the people and activities here on campus to essentially inform our immediate university community about what's going on and uh, introduce you to the people at this fast-growing campus. And today we're going to take a, an important and necessary step that I hope will be the beginning of uh, something we'll do quite often here on the Live Wire. And we're going to start talking to our neighbors, which every good neighbor ought to do. And today um, we're speaking to a neighbor who um, is, is sort of a, a, a person who gathers up neighborhood relationships here in the university, university city area as part of her job. So in talking to her, we're really talking to hundreds of neighbors from, from University City. But our guest is uh, Darlene Heater, who is the executive director of University City Partners. And uh, Darlene, first of all, welcome and thank you for coming over to campus today. Well, gosh, thanks for having me yeah, today. Sure. It's a pleasure to be here. And let's get started, uh, set the stage with um, your world. Um, most of us who are part of the university uh, community here, here University City, uh, it's on road signs, it's a, it's a concept, it's a place, it's real. From your perspective, University City Partners, tell us what it is and, and how it comes together and give us a little bit of a sense of um, the scope, both in people and businesses involved. And Sure, I'm glad to and thanks for asking. Um, University City is Charlotte's second largest employment center. Um, we employ in this market area 73,000 workers, mm -hmm. um, which is quite remarkable because a lot of those workers are tucked into the tree canopy. Um, most of our business parks are very wooded, so it's not the first thing that you would think of when you drive into University City. It's also home to about 160,000 residents. Um, in fact, 28269, which is a University City zip code, um, was... Um, noted that it is the most the sixth most moved to neighborhood in the nation in the nation wow. isn't that remarkable wow. so it is um university city is growing um, we are feeling it right yeah. all throughout the community um, in the form of construction barrels and, and and a lot of folks moving into the area um, it is also the terminus for the blue line extension right the blue line extension is running from uptown um, to University City and will terminate on campus. Um, and the construction of that is underway. Everybody can see it. And um, with a goal of completion by the spring of 2017. Sure. You know, th those of us who aren't originally from Charlotte, and some days you think that's most of us, because Charlotte is a place where so many people come from other places. Um, but we pick up quickly on the history and, and know from our perspective on Charlotte from other places in the country for many years that this is a city that... Um, experienced um, a major boom and growth um, and with the growth of banking and uh, we became the the second financial center in the United States as some would say um, and that occurred maybe from the 70s and the 80s and into the 90s and we kind of began to come of age at that time but it sounds like what you're saying that we could kind of extrapolate on that idea and say through the next chapter of Charlotte we are right now physically where that's really going to take place in a big way. It is, and you know, decades ago, our civic visionaries um, envisioned a city that would um, encompass the campus mm -hmm. and would support business, would support students, would support study, um, and now we're starting to realize that vision. Yeah. Um, you know, 73,000 workers, second largest employment center, and growing. You know, we have three headquarter locations in University City, uh, 23 Fortune 500 companies represented here. We are probably the most diverse neighborhood in all of Charlotte. Let's, uh, let's remind our viewers uh, here on the Live Wire that um, as we talk about University City partners, um, you can check out um, the organization and uh, uh, good menu of its activities on the web. Do that after our conversation though if you don't mind, but universitycitypartners.org. Well, let's take a look at your website real quickly. Um, we'll put that up on the screen and um, are, you, are you essentially like a, like a chamber of commerce or is there more to it than that? There's more to it than that. Um, University City Partners is an MSD organization, mm -hmm. so we're funded by a very 
um, minute tax um, on right. certain property owners within a very in, within a defined geography. Um, University City Partners came to be in 2003, so we're a relatively young organization. Sure. Um, we are the exact type of organization as Charlotte Center City Partners, mm -hmm. um, which has been here for closer to 35 years. Um, but the visionaries and the civic leaders um, in the early 2000s recognized the opportunity that if University City were to receive the rail line, um, receive funding and the go-ahead from the state and the federal and the, and the city entities as well, that if there were the proper attention paid to the type of development that we see, it be, could become a second center um, for Charlotte. Let's talk about that rail line. By, by starting um, this segment of our discussion, we will note that there are many um, construction projects, many changes, many infrastructure things going on right there, right out there as we speak. And uh, over the next several years, um, our, our part of the city is going to be transformed. And um, I, I think there's general agreement that at the heart of that is the extension of light rail. Um, right now, you start to get a sense as you see the signs and the, the work underway, uh, particularly on the uh, north end of Tryon, mm -hmm. that um, it's going to be a highly visible uh, construction project. And, and here on campus, we've had a pretty massive swath of trees that needed to be removed as the tracks come into essentially the end of the line, which is um, just uh, near our student union, actually. Um, how, how, have, um, how have our neighbors across University City um, begun to prepare for the coming of light rail and also for what at some days is going to seem like sort of an inconvenience as we, as we develop it's it. It's going to be a short-term inconvenience. Yeah. Um, and an inconvenience for the businesses, an inconvenience for the students and the faculty mm -hmm. um, at UNC Charlotte, um, an inconvenience for commuters who, um, who either work in University City or who commute through University City to get to their destination. And the light rail is certainly probably the most visible um, construction project in University City, although we do have several major projects, major road projects that are um, also going on in right. University City that kind of add to that, um, the visibility of University City being under construction. Um, the rail line is a is 11 mile or 9.3 mile uh, extension of the blue line, the existing blue line with 11 stations and four of them will be in University City. So in addition to the rail line coming, um, we'll also see four transit stations, mm -hmm. um, two parking decks that will provide uh, parking for people who are commuting to the, the light rail, then want to jump on the light rail to get to their, their destination. Um, and th that's pretty big infrastructure it, all by itself. And then and, when you add yeah. to that the other construction projects that we have going on with 485, um, 85, which has wrapped up uh, other significant road projects, um, Grand Street, Mallard Creek, um, it is it gets... Um, congested. Well, I would say I, we have a lot of traffic volume that comes through University City um, and all I, I will say that all of us commuters, residents, workers, students, faculty, we just need to be patient sure. and recognize that this is a short-term um, inconvenience that is going to pay off remarkably for University City. It really City. is a question of, of once, once the scope of what's happening starts to sink in and how different potentially our, our part of Charlotte's going to be starting in 2017, 2018. It, keeping our eyes on that prize ought to be something that most of us can figure out how to do and be, be okay with, with, the, with the construction. But you mentioned the four stations, and that, that's four stations specifically in University City. Correct. And two of them are essentially on campus. One, um, one at J.W. Clay. One at J.W. Clay, and then one that's actually on campus, as I said, kind of um, if you go extend further beyond the student union and beyond the newer res student residential area there and kind of near the parking deck, the north deck, that's going to become um, probably the, the hub for our students who are going to take advantage of the light rail as well. Um, but the other two stops, tell us a little bit about so, the location. So uh, you are correct, total of four stops, three um, that will be on Tryon Street and then the terminus here on campus. The first one is at University City Boulevard, the University City Boulevard station. The next one up the line is McCullough. Mm -hmm. The one after that is J.W. Clay, which is right at the Charlotte Research Institute um, and the shops at University Place. They share that and, and the hospital as well. And then, of course, the terminus that's over by the student union. So of those four University City stops, um, the first three, as you're coming north, are essentially as the train is coming down the middle of Tryon. 
Is that correct? Correct. And, and, and remember that the train runs adjacent to Tryon Street until it gets to University City. Then it jumps over to the middle of Tryon Street and will run the median until it gets close to campus. It'll go under Tryon Street, pop up onto campus, and then terminate over by the Student Union. You know, if that's not enough to get somebody excited, I mean, just just the picture in your head of, well, uh, that's going to be pretty cool. So, it is going to be yeah. pretty cool. And yeah. what a lot of folks don't realize is um, once it, when it gets to Harris Boulevard, it goes above ground. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll actually bridge over Harris um, to allow for better traffic um, logistics there. Um, once it gets d over by Mallard Point Center and the Charlotte Research Institute, it starts to go below grade. Yeah. Um, and then it has to go under Tryon Street to get onto campus. We have... Um, a, a video that we can take a look at now. It takes about six minutes and uh, I think it's um, it's informative. Um, it's something that I know we've um, talked about on campus before but I hope that the folks who are watching now will take note of this because it really helps them. Uh, it helps all of us as we try to explain what, what each of us knows and our own perspectives on this. But this is a this is a video that's produced by CATS, the Charlotte Area Transportation System, um, that talks about the Blue Line extension and sort of the history of light rail and, and the future of light rail. So let's take, a, let's take a few minutes in our program right now on the live wire and we'll go to YouTube and we will take a look at this video from CATS and then we'll be back to talk a little bit more with Darlene Heater about light rail and then some of the other issues um, that are um, happening right now um, in our broad university city neighborhoods. Let's take a look at that video. The Charlotte Area Transit System, or CATS, and the City of Charlotte opened the Lynx Blue Line in November 2007. The Lynx Blue Line is the first light rail line in North Carolina. This 9.6 mile alignment operates from I-485 at South Boulevard to Uptown Charlotte. With 15 stations, 7 park and rides, and a congestion-free commute with a consistent travel time, the Lynx Blue Line has been highly successful. The project has been recognized nationally and internationally for its design, operations, safety, ridership, and transit-oriented development. Now, CADS is moving forward with the construction of the $1.16 billion Lynx Blue Line extension. This project is not just bringing rail to Charlotte's University City, it's bringing commuters to a new choice. The Blue Line extension connects educational opportunities, the arts, jobs, conventions, businesses, and more. This 9.3 mile extension adds 11 stations and four park and rides to the current Lynx Blue Line. The project begins where the existing Blue Line ends, at 7th Street Station, by Imaginon, and the 7th Street Public Market. The first station is at 9th Street, located adjacent to the UNC Charlotte Center City Campus. Sidewalks connect pedestrians between 9th and 12th Streets. From the 9th Street Station, the alignment passes under the existing 11th Street and I-277 bridges and crosses 12th Street. It then bridges over the existing CSX tracks and follows along the North Carolina Railroad Corridor to 16th Street. After crossing 16th Street, the line moves on to the Parkwood Station at the intersection of Parkwood Avenue and North Brevard Street, near the neighborhoods of Belmont, Optimus Park, and Villa Heights. Between 22nd and 23rd Streets is the entrance to the project's North Yard facility. Constructed on part of the existing Norfolk Southern Intermodal Yard, this facility will provide train dispatch, a cleaning area, and overnight train storage. The next station is at 25th Street, near Little Sugar Creek. New sidewalks join the 25th Street and Parkwood stations. The Blue Line extension passes under the existing Matheson Avenue Bridge, and then it's on to 36th Street Station in Charlotte's historic North Davidson, also known as Noda. The station in Noda brings riders to one of the liveliest art districts in the city, home of unique restaurants, art galleries, and music venues. In this area, the Lynx Blue Line extension construction lowers vehicle traffic on 36th Street to travel under the existing freight tracks and the new light rail tracks. The station platform is partially located on a bridge structure crossing the street below. From 36th Street, the light rail line heads to the Sugar Creek Station. On the way to the Sugar Creek Station, the project parallels a portion of North Davidson Street and then bridges over the freight tracks at Craighead Road. The Sugar Creek Station is the first park and ride on the Blue Line extension. Parking accommodates 600 to 700 spaces. Immediately north of the Sugar Creek Station, the North Carolina Department of Transportation is designing a grade separation project for Sugar Creek Road to bridge over the railroad corridor. 
CATS and NCDOT are working together to coordinate the road and the light rail construction. The Blue Line extension continues along the North Carolina Railroad corridor and passes under the newly lengthened Eastway Drive Bridge. The next station is the Old Concord Road Station. The park and ride for this station provides approximately 300 spaces. The station and park and ride are accessible from both Old Concord Road and North Tryon Street. After leaving the station, the Blue Line extension bridges over the intersection of North Tryon Street and Old Concord Road and into the new North Tryon Street median. The light rail project widens North Tryon Street for the next four miles, building a median, improving the north and southbound travel lanes, and providing bike lanes, planting strips, and sidewalks. The light rail runs the newly constructed median, separated from the vehicle traffic lanes. Four new traffic signals are added to North Tryon Street between Old Concord Road and Tom Hunter Road. Similar to the South Corridor, the Blue Line extension construction includes light rail bridges at major intersections, such as Old Concord Road, I-85 Connector, University City Boulevard, and W.T. Harris Boulevard to minimize traffic impacts for roadway vehicles. Next on the alignment is the Tom Hunter Station, serving the Hidden Valley and Newell South neighborhoods. Here, riders will see artwork created by neighborhood children incorporated into the station design. Traveling further northeast, the line bridges over the existing North Tryon I-85 connector and reaches the University City Boulevard station, the largest of the four park and ride lots with 1,500 parking spaces. Commuters can enter the University City Boulevard parking garage from North Tryon Street via a new street that provides a convenient connection to City Boulevard and I-85. After the University City Boulevard intersection, we reach McCullough Station. The light rail then bridges over W.T. Harris Boulevard and heads to the J.W. Clay Boulevard UNC Charlotte Station, which includes a parking garage on the northwest corner of North Tryon Street and J.W. Clay Boulevard. The four to five levels of parking accommodate 600 to 800 vehicles. As the train leaves the station, the alignment continues in the median of North Tryon. After passing the intersection at Institute Circle, the rail line gradually descends under the northbound lanes of North Tryon and enters the UNC Charlotte campus. The line bridges over Toby Creek and heads to the UNC Charlotte main station, the last stop on the line. The station is located on the campus across from Wallace Hall Dormitory and near the Student Union. Scheduled to open in 2017, the Lynx Blue Line extension generates economic growth, connects communities, provides commuting choices, and supports the development of pedestrian-friendly urban neighborhoods with a mixture of land uses. All right, that, that video is uh, obviously available on YouTube and uh, you can look it up and uh, I think each time I see it, it's been a handful of times, I pick up on something I hadn't thought about before. Um, our guest is uh, Darlene Heater, Executive Director of University City Partners, and we're talking um, about the um, coming of light rail and some of the other uh, transformational projects that are underway up here in University City in our neighborhood. And Darlene, that, that um, video reminds us that the stations all along the extension are for the most part going to have park and ride facilities. Um, one of the ways I suppose that we're all counting on transformation occurring is in the way people get to and from work. Um, and people will um, maybe come as far as one of the centers, uh, University City stations and park and ride and then there they'll be. But tell us a little bit more specifically about the economic development impact that you're counting on or mm -hmm. uh, and dreaming of uh, because of the light rail extension. What what does that look like? Does it look like you know more customers at our at our restaurants and and shops, or does it look like an expansion of retail? Or wh what are you already thinking is going to happen up here in University it, City? Right. It certainly provides that opportunity, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, we think of the light rail as providing access to uptown, but I can't tell you how many people I'm in meetings with that talk about the ability now to easily get to campus and to yeah. University City um, to enjoy some of the amenities that we have up this way. 
Um, what many folks don't realize is the light rail is just one investment mm -hmm. um, in the infrastructure in University City. The city is also funding um, through a program they call Northeastern Corridor Improvements, which is part of the um, community investment plan. This, you know, the city take, takes a 10-year strategy in investing in the city of Charlotte to create opportunities for more livable neighborhoods um, and opportunities for economic development, right? To bring more retail, to bring more um, business to Charlotte. And University City is poised to realize over the next eight years some significant investment in additional streets, sidewalks, lighting, bike lanes, um, and that will come majorly at the tail end of the, um, the construction of the light rail. So in addition to access that we're getting from light rail, we're also going to realize additional infrastructure through streets and, and bike lanes and sidewalks and lighting that make it um, a, a community that becomes more walkable mm -hmm. and more bikeable, which is critically important um, for the campus, right? right? Because we have this explosion of off-campus housing, and now we have a lot of students that are living, um, you know, within a three-mile radius of mm -hmm. campus. And or right across sure, the street. Or right across the street. But making <laughs> right. sure that they have safe ways right. to bike and to walk to campus is important for this university. Um, but it also creates opportunity for economic development um, along the rail line, which is something we've been working on with the city for, for a few years. We uh, created a, a transit station area plan, which guides development. Um, that was originally created in 2007. Mm -hmm. um, we're updating it now because there have been a little bit of change with the, the station areas. Um, but we're working very closely with the city to understand um, the type of development that we should be trying to recruit. Um, to that transit corridor, but also the form of that, um, so that we're not getting a lot of what we have now, but mm -hmm. something that looks more like a transit-oriented neighborhood. So what what specifically comes to mind if somebody were to ask you, like I am now, what, what's missing from University City? What's missing from our, uh, you know, the, the scope of the, of the economy up here in terms mm -hmm. of, you know, is, is there a, a big kind of retailer that we're missing? Would we love to have a big performing arts center on campus? Yes. But, <laughs> but, but, but what, other, what are the things that you point to to say, you know, this is, this is something that would really enhance the development of University City and our hope is that with light rail coming in and the other improvements that it's going to be even all the more feasible down the line. University City has 13.5% of the metro region's retail. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of that retail is destination retail, right? We mm -hmm. have Ikea and um, Walmart and some and, of these and bigger boxes. That's, and that's important for us to know. The, the, the geographic footprint of University City essentially mm -hmm. starts down but, at Ikea? Or, correct, yeah, up then, to 485, the okay. market area, up to 485, yeah. over to the North Lake area, and then so at the So we consider the Ikea over development, to Harrisburg. The, that's, that's, that, that's the border and that is considered part of University City. So for Correct. those of us who might be confused, are you talking about you know, right around campus because it's called University City? Not exactly, it's right. much, it's much larger. Than, yeah. It is, but when you ask what are we missing, so we have great mm -hmm. um, destination assets in retail. Yeah. Um, a lot of big furniture stores and um, big box stores that serve our needs very well. Um, but what we don't have is that neighborhood service retail, right? That mm -hmm. corner coffee shop um, mm -hmm. that you can walk to from your condo or your townhome. I had a guest um, on campus yesterday who was over on the 49 side. So he didn't see the Starbucks that's staring sure. you right in the face on 29. But he said, boy, I'm heading to the airport and it sure would be great to grab a cup of coffee. And I, I, don't, see a, I don't see a coffee <laughs> shop. He didn't necessarily say Starbucks. And I said, well, you know, it's, it's a two-minute walk from my office to Harris Teeter, the grocery mm -hmm. store, to go inside to the Starbucks that's there if you're, you know, if you're interested in doing that or there's a Dunkin' Donuts, that kind of thing. But you're right. The idea of just being able to say, even from the perspective of being on 49 or 29, there's an easy way to go on foot and feel like you're in a neighborhood. Correct. Something to work on. Correct. Yeah. And that's what we aspire to. And that is... Um, at the center of becoming a transit-oriented neighborhood. The, yeah. There's more density, you have neighborhood supportive retail that serves your immediate needs. Um, in, in University City, we're very fortunate that we also have destination retail. We have a lot of de destination assets like the Botanical Gardens um, and the Performing Arts Center and football and Reedy Creek Park and the, yeah. the Motor Speedway. Um, but what we really need is those amenities that create lifestyle, yeah. right? Let's talk a little bit about one of those items too, football. We're now in year 1.5, right. <laughs> moving along, and, and you know the, the future the future looks bright, and particularly as the 
49ers get into Conference USA and we um, have, you know, a, a history of recruitment and the team gets stronger, it can only get stronger over time and, and things are going to look up there. But how how has um, how has the neighborhood responded? Are things going well on football Saturdays from from a business perspective? Um, are we seeing areas where we wish were a little bit different or better? Or how wh what's been the response from our from our university city partners? So our <laughs> our businesses that are close to the stadium definitely see an uptick yeah. in business on game days. You know they um, the folks who come to football games either go before or after the games and, mm -hmm. and you know they buy a cup of coffee or a beer at one of the bars um, they stay in our hotels up here so it has been very good yeah. um, football has been a, a very good thing mm -hmm. for University City um, we have a little bit of challenges with parking mm -hmm. um, you know and, and I, I will emphasize that um, for the students and the faculty and anybody else who's watching this to be mindful of where where you're, you're permitted to park on those days and the and the university makes it pretty easy um, with great signage and good website tools. Those signs go up, it uh, seems like they're up on Wednesdays. I think it's actually Thursday night that essentially the big highway signs that warn you football day's coming and parking's going to be right. this, that, and the other thing. Right, and, and especially at our retail centers. You sure. know, they're, that parking is created for those retailers to serve their customers and when we have um, people that are parking there that are not patronizing the businesses, mm -hmm. um, it is challenging for those businesses and those retail centers to do business. So it's not okay if I want to say, well, I'm, I'm going to go over to the Flying Saucer afterwards after the game, so let me just put my car here. Right. That's a no-no, right? Right. But, but let's, let's talk a little bit more about that because um, we, we know and we hear that um, some of our neighbors are concerned about um, sort of the, the spillover, um, students, faculty, and staff um, who are finding ways uh, to be creative in parking as they come to campus. Um, I see people dodging traffic, taking their lives into their hands, trying to run across 49 because they park down around Harris Teeter. And I know that's not appreciated by that shopping center. And I know it's not appreciated in Mallard Point. I mean, that's not to say they don't appreciate us or we don't appreciate them, but um, what, what more can we do to be mindful of that? I mean, I, I, think, you, I think you answered that, but again, um, in case people haven't thought about it, that's not just a, hey, there's a parking place there and I don't have to pay to park. That's right. right. I would say that we are all part of this community yeah. and because we are all in this together, we should all be good neighbors and yeah. respectful of the businesses that are trying to support the community. Um, Harris Teeter is where they are because of their location. Um, yeah. They serve this community, they serve the university and the students and the faculty, but they also serve residents. Um, in this area and that parking is critical to their success. So when parking is taken by people who are not um, customers yeah. um, and going there for a very specific customer related um, visit, then it takes that opportunity away from another customer who may want to go there. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's tough for businesses. So I just, I would ask that everybody be good neighbors, um, be respectful of those rules and, and find parking that is where it's permitted. Sure. And with with the light rail and with those park and ride facilities too. I mean, what what's it going to cost to to park there and and commute or park there and nose around in University City or whatever? I mean, what so parking has been free at mm -hmm. all of the park and rides, mm -hmm. and the the city is working on a program with with the university um, to be able to create pass cards for. Um, light rail so mm -hmm. that students will be able to park, ride, transit, um, and do all of those things with one swipe card and I think that they're getting close on that. Um, but all along the rail line parking is complimentary for rail riders. Yeah. One more project just to just to touch on, we, we hinted at it a bit, but um, improvements on 29 or Tryon that are focused right now on the bridge and it's a bridge <laughs> that most people don't even know is there because it's not an obvious bridge, but if you're right. down on the Greenway, you know, yeah, that's where the Greenway goes under 29, kind of up near Cookout. Correct. That's what we're talking about. Um, and I, I come in in the mornings for a little stretch and, and come in from the north, and today was the day that it is indeed. It, it's closed, um, and we've talked about it here. We talk about it on, on campus. We sent out a, an email to everybody who's part of the university community this week about that. But... Um, Another example of something that it's inconvenience. We've had some signs up. We've kind of seen it coming. Um, you anticipate um, much trouble or confusion uh, now that we're officially into this period, and how long are we expecting that stretch of 29 to be um, all out closed for that one direction? 
Sure. Um, and thanks for asking about that. I'll tell you, it is very hard to articulate where that bridge is when right. I'm in meetings. And, and I always use that reference, reference point. It's between the Ortho Carolina and the cookout. Right. Um, the, the, the full project, um, they have to replace that bridge because it's one of the bridges in the state of North Carolina that has been identified yeah. um, as failing infrastructure. From, from the 1950s, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It yeah. is. And it's a narrow bridge. Mm -hmm. um, when they rebuild it, it will be a wider bridge um, and will be a will allow for better, better traffic mm -hmm. um, movement uh, on Tryon Street. Um, it is a 15-month project but it will only be restricted to one direction traffic for seven months. So we're starting it now, it'll be completed by the spring, then it'll be limited two-way um, with single lanes. But it will, of course, take some adjustment on behalf of commuters, um, just to remember and recognize, I got caught in it myself this morning, yeah. um, just to remember that, that there's an alternative way to get around and they've made very, um, reasonable detour routes, you know, using I-85 and then routing people back onto Harris Boulevard. All of those businesses are open for business, so I'd encourage everybody to continue to visit those businesses. Yeah. Um, there, there is some restriction in the way that you can get there. Well, and and as I said, I, I mean, those of us who use that route, we've seen the, the highway signs, we've seen the, the flashers that say this is coming. I think they missed it by a day or two because the, there right. are signs that have been in the 15th. <laughs> I think the rain may have had something yeah, to do but, with that. But that's okay. And, and, and so um, I guess right now we'll, we'll see and I think we'll, we'll all have to adopt the we're all in this together kind of, kind of approach right. to it. But, uh, and in, one other note on that project is that the Greenway has been rerouted. So I know a lot so you of, don't walk under right, a lot of our residents and students yeah. use that Greenway to get to and from places. Um, it's still accessible. It just has a detour itself Got it. um, and a new multi-use path. Uh, path. Well, I think this this needs to be the beginning of more conversations um, over the next uh, two or three years, even as, as University City mm -hmm. is transformed by all of these uh, exciting projects, and as the university main campus continues to transform, and um, the idea now that our Center City campus, with the train connecting it, is is going to feel like it's even more of just it's part of us too, um, and it, exciting things in the First Ward Park, that sort of thing that's coming up. Uh, these are pretty exciting days for Charlotte, and it's exciting to think that the focus of this next chapter of transformation um, is us. Is here. Yeah. Is that's, here. That's and if great. I could just close on one comment, yeah. a lot of this infrastructure improvement is going to be enabled um, by city bonds, mm -hmm. um, and those city bonds are on this year's ballot. Um, so visit the Charlotte website called charlottefutures.com and become educated about the city bonds because they are critical to the growth and development of University City. And if we're not, yeah, we ought to be because the time to vote is right, nearly right upon, upon us. us. Yeah, so. All right, well, we say thank you to Darlene Heater from University City Partners for joining us today, and we'll definitely have you back, and we'll definitely uh, zero in on more of these projects as they come along. And someday we're going to talk about 49 and the widening of the road and the stoplight that some of us have been dying to have down there. And that's it's exciting. Time, so. so um, more to come, but uh, thank you for now for being with us, and we appreciate you coming in. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you. It's a pleasure to be here. All right, thanks.